I don't know if I'm loud, I'm supposed to talk. Can anybody hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. All right. No, I wouldn't say he's Jesus, but I will say one time he turned one kitchen table into a thousand little pieces. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now, I told the story in vlog, but when I was six years old, uh, I was listening to Red Hot Chili Peppers in the bedroom, and it dawned on me that one day my dad was going to pass. And so I walked into the living room, and he was watching wrestling. And I said, Dad, I don't want you to die. And I'll never forget what he said. He looked at me, and he said, well, I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> and so are you. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> You've made life so much better for me. You know? And that's not the, the last time he did it. He would gather the kids around and circle. <laughs> <laughs> this happened at least once a month. He'd say, hey, gather around, listen to me now. All right, you know my dad one day, right? <laughs> That's dad, I get it. Charlie, quit crying, you can be the man of the house. <laughs> right? You're going to want to make us all the money. <laughs> he was right. Yeah. He was right, I made the money. So, a uh, bunch of years ago, we had nothing. We didn't have, well, I can't say a pot to, yep. you know, I'm not in the right place to use this kind of language, but, you know, yeah, we didn't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out. <laughs> we had a little, a little bad. trailer in Trailwood that we didn't even own. We got from my uncle. And <clears throat> I was able to go from there, showing him destroy the house and throw a lot of food away, and hey, people called the police on us, <laughs> and, you know, the police came all the time, I don't know if you guys know that, but yeah. like, it was like a standard appointment, the police would show like every Sunday, you know, someone called, said you broke a TV, I want to see if everything's okay, yep. like, we're good, and we were able to go from that to me being able to buy him, you know, his first house, and I bought him a 55 Chevy, the dream car, the peanut car. and He'd be angry at me if I cried up here. He always told us he would haunt us if we cried up here. He also told me that I would burst in flames if I ever stepped foot into the church. <laughs> so far, I'm okay. I'm, you know, this is a little hot right now, so I don't know. It still happens. Then you'd say, I can put you one every Sunday. <laughs> I'll, I'll think about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, he, always, he always told us, don't cry for him. But it's hard not to. But when I think about Dad, I think about how many times he almost died. This isn't the first time, guys. Number one, he hung out with a serial killer. Yeah. I don't know how many people know that, but he could have been murdered at a really young age. But he still wanted free drinks at the bar, so he hung out with Pete Gaskin. Put his life in danger for a free drink. It is what it is. He rode around in a hearse. Yep. And it, who knows, there was probably a body in the hearse and he didn't know it. Or maybe he did. I don't know. <laughs> he had a heart attack when he was in his 40s. And he died on the operating table. And we went to the hospital to say goodbye. And by the time we got there, like, yeah, he's alive again. Oh, cool. <laughs> Dad's all right. Then he had gastric bypass surgery. And he died on the operating table. And we went to the hospital and we said goodbye. By the way, why weren't we already at the hospital? Like, shouldn't we have already been <laughs> Oh my God. Why are we at home? So we go to the hospital and he's back. Oh, dad survived again, you know? Uh, he had a tracheotomy because he smoked so much. He smoked so much that when he was in his bed, he was lighting imaginary cigarettes before he passed. He was doing this, muscle memory. He was a horrible smoker and he got a tracheotomy and we went to the hospital because he died and he was back. And he got from the gastric bypass surgery, he had a hernia removed, and he died again, and he came back. So this last time, I guess, he just survived too many, he just survived too many near-death experiences, and this was the last one. You know, for somebody who hated cat so much, he had nine lives. Yeah. So, I think if he was here right now, he would say two things. Number one, he would say, damn, you got fat. <laughs> You're right. I've been, you know, guilty eating for about 20, 30 years. And the other thing is, he would say, Well, didn't I tell you I was going to die? And I told you it was coming. Now I'm dead. And you're next. And I love you. I'm going to miss you tremendously. And 
Thank you guys so much for coming.